Hello, my name is Angelic, also known as Gothic Ka413 on social media. I'm known mostly for my horror artwork specifically for my strawberry shortcake artwork. In 2021, I restarted my tattoo artist journey, which is probably my largest regret. I can only speak on my personal experiences here. I thought I found a shop that would help me get my tattoo license and help me learn the basics. Instead, I was sexually harassed over and over again. This place was called Bloodlines. I was encouraged to dress inappropriately, asked if I wanted to see the owner's private parts in the bathroom, had sexual remarks made towards me and was once pressured to undress. I was approximately 19 at the time. The power imbalance made it so hard for me to leave. In my head, I thought if I pushed through it, it would be worth it. But then the news of how girls under the shop owner's mentorship obtained their license was revealed. Sexual favors. After I made it clear I wasn't interested, I was treated very badly. My boyfriend insisted I leave and I did. Due to my problems with this shop, they attempted multiple times to bully and black bull me in the future which didn't work. I was at the shop for a long time. Now I had to start over at another shop, which was devastating to me. I eventually found a new shop. This shop was called Afterlife. I was happy to find out that the shop owner had a male partner, so in my head, I thought there wouldn't be any harassment. Which was true, but the experience was awful there too. I received lots of sexist remarks and was belittled constantly. I was expected to bring the shop phone into the bathroom with me. I would falsely get accused of not cleaning. I would be ordered to clean via hand snapping like a servant. I was also told if I was interested in piercing I wouldn't be allowed to say no to genital piercings. I was there for a year. In my head, I thought again if I just put up with the abuse it would be worth it for my license. When I realized I wasn't allowed to practice on fake skin after a year of being there I had to leave. Again I had to shop hop. I found another shop it was called Skaskiet at the time. The experience there was a huge improvement but not perfect. The shop houses over eight artists, so similar to a family there was always drama. Some people liked me and some people hated me, which was weird because I was in my 20 seconds and almost everyone was over 30. I can't say I regret being at this shop. There were people there who I felt who genuinely cared about me. But like I mentioned before, being housed with so many artists has issues. From being called ugly and lazy, to being forced to tattoo a girl who sexually assaulted me otherwise, I'd be kicked out. There was a time when someone's crazy baby mama tried to fight me outside the shop because she thought I was sleeping with her man. Which obviously wasn't true. A lot of the time I wouldn't stay at the shop until my boyfriend got out of work. I didn't really have friends and I didn't like being home alone. So I was waiting at the shop for him to get out. She took it as me waiting for her to leave. That couple was in a very toxic abusive relationship. I felt unsafe with them being involved in the shop. There was nothing I could do. But being there got me way closer to my license than I was previously. They helped me do tattoo conventions and technically I was licensed. I only left the shop because I couldn't afford the rent anymore. I went to a friend of the shop. I had met him before. So I figured it wouldn't be too bad. This shop was called Papillum Reborn. When I first got there, it was lots of drama and for no good reason. Two of the main artists there treated me awful, a middle-aged man and an elderly man. On my first day, I had been told a very sexist remark by the middle-aged one. Something along the lines of girls have tried to use their body to impress others but it doesn't work on me. Basically implying I was hired only because of my looks. I sort of had to restart my apprenticeship because my previous shop owner from Skaskiet had sold the shop to another artist. Him leaving to create a new shop. Because of this, no one would reinstate my tattoo license, which was more devastating news. I was now approximately 22. Spending three years trying to get my license but still not receiving it was really frustrating. The other artist who didn't like me was more of the reason why I left, the older one. At first, I thought he cared about me and was being helpful, but he would purposefully give me bad tattoo advice so then he couldn't turn around and be like look she's bad at tattooing. He would hover over my clients and frown at everything I did. Over time he stopped being too faced with me and really showed his disdain for me. Trying to get me kicked out altogether, which didn't work, 
He ended up leaving because the shop owner didn't give in to his ultimatum. At the time I quit my security job because I was offered a social media job the shop owner, this tattoo shop also owned a tattoo supply company. After I officially quit my job, they then tell me they couldn't afford to hire me, which was really annoying for me. When the owner spends thousands to make modifications to his sports car, the shop owner was also trying to dictate what I was allowed to post on my account which I was against. What was the last straw was when the artist who previously quit was allowed to come back. Shortly after returning, he yelled in my face and tried to physically intimidate me by implying he would hit me. I reported this to the shop owner. I was told someone would come to the shop to talk to him and check up on me. No one did. The next day I quietly packed my things and left my shop key. Two other older women also quit the shop. I really cared for them. I did everything I could to help them when they needed something. Picking up food, giving rides, helping them pick up their kids from school and even gifting one of them my old car. I felt like we had a good relationship and bond. We all decided to run our own shop together, which seemed like an amazing idea at the time. I always offered my money and time if they needed it. I tried to visit every so often. Since the shop wasn't fully opened, I had to work a normal job still. One day, I received a call that changed everything. I can't speak on it too much due to the legal action I plan to take against them. But the result of this situation left me with approximately 20000 in debt. Shortly after I started seeing the red flags, it started when I asked them to attend a tattoo convention in Pennsylvania. Central Paw Tattoo and Horror Expo. Both women said they wanted to go. I paid for a $525 booth. I then requested their full legal names and licenses or permits, which they sent. I paid for the booth, and I then requested one of the girls to help by looking at a place for us to stay since it was four hours away. They said they would. It gets closer to the time of the convention and I get nervous. If you wait too long to book, you'll either pay so much money for a place or not find anything at all, so I gently asked for an update. Their response was to tell me to look myself. I was thinking okay they probably want me to look and then we can all agree on something. I sent a bunch of listings for them to review. No reply. I was very anxious that they wanted me to pay for everything or they didn't want to go anymore. So I very politely told them if they couldn't go to let me know. I was going regardless and I wouldn't be upset if they didn't come. I was told I was overreacting and needed to stop jumping to conclusions. So I booked an Airbnb that fit all of us multiple beds. I invited my mother because I was nervous to be with those women alone due to how they were currently acting. The day before the trip, I asked them again if they were going. I was told no, all of that was very upsetting because I already knew they weren't going to go due to them ghosting me. But they still dared to gaslight me, and this is the behavior these girls exhibit. I gave up tattooing. To me, it's not worth it anymore. I got my license after all that and it was for nothing. Now I'm hoping to either recoup my debt so I can continue my life or take legal action against certain individuals. All of this has put me in a really bad place. Most days I dread waking up. I can't believe this is my life. But now I just work two normal jobs to try to attempt to fix my finances so I can finally buy a house with my boyfriend and start my family. Thank you for listening. I know I was trauma dumping so... I'm sorry about that, but feel free to follow me on all my socials, link below. Also, I have a GoFundMe set up as, well, the number represents my debt, but I only plan to use the money for legal representation or pay for my debt. I also have emergency commissions open on my Instagram. I hope we can talk again on better terms.